Subscribe our channel for latest news updates. Trump launches $1.5 trillion infrastructure sales pitch. His infrastructure plan is light on federal dollars and heavy on incentives for state and local spending. The White House finally rolled out President Donald Trump's long awaited infrastructure plan Monday, swinging for the fences with a $1.5 trillion initiative that is light on new federal dollars but could inspire a wave of toll roads, ease decades old regulations, and permanently change cities and states' expectations for assistance from Washington. It is time to give Americans the working, modern infrastructure they deserve," Trump said in a message to Congress accompanying his legislative outline. The proposal faces tough odds in Congress, some conservative Republicans are already expressing shock at Trump's total price tag, while Democrats say the share coming from the federal government would be too little to fill the backlog of crumbling roads, bridges, railroads, tunnels and airports, along with other needs like rural broadband service, veterans' hospitals, toxic waste cleanups and drinking water. Trump is proposing to provide $200 billion for his plan over the next 10 years not a large amount. He has conceded paid for by unspecified cuts elsewhere in the budget proposal that the White House also plans to release Monday. That spending is meant to draw an additional $1.3 trillion or more in investments from cities, states, private investors, and other sources. But more fundamentally, the White House says it will finally address a dysfunctional system in which Washington calls too many of the shots, federal red tape gets in the way and some communities fail to put enough skin in the game all while dire needs go unmet. The current system is fundamentally broken, and it's broken in two different ways, a senior administration official told reporters during a briefing Saturday. We are under-investing in our infrastructure, and we have a permitting process that takes so long that even when funds are adequate, it can take a decade to build critical infrastructure. Trump's plan, the official said, offers a permanent fix. The plan also includes specific money for rural communities, aimed to encourage apprenticeships and other forms of workforce training, and pay for unspecified transformative, next-century type projects that would lift the American spirit. The official said. However, Many infrastructure advocates believe that the real fix that's needed is a permanent new revenue stream, something Trump's plan doesn't address. Oregon Representative Peter DeFazio, the top Democrat on the Transportation Committee, said in an address Friday that Trump's plan would slash the federal commitment to a national infrastructure network. This is not a real infrastructure plan it's simply another scam an attempt by this administration to privatize critical government functions and create windfalls for their buddies on Wall Street, DeFazio said. This fake proposal will not address the serious infrastructure needs facing this country, so our potholed roads will get worse, our bridges and transit systems will become more dangerous, and our tolls will become higher. Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon, the top Democrat on the Finance Committee, called the plan another broken promise to rebuild America's aging infrastructure. He added, $200 billion is a drop in the bucket compared to the $1.5 trillion Republicans in Congress just spent to slash taxes for multinational corporations and the donor class. But key Republicans were quick to issue supportive statements Monday. Please permit us to say that President Trump hit the nail on the head when constructing this plan to rebuild America's infrastructure, House Energy and Commerce Chairman Greg Walden, R. Orr, said in a statement issued with three of his subcommittee chairs, Fred Upton, R. Mitch, John Shimkus, R. Ill, and Marsha Blackburn, R. 10. Improving our country's infrastructure can be a bipartisan effort and we stand ready to strap on our work boots and pave the way for success with our colleagues across the aisle. The plan that the White House released Monday is a statement of principles that Congress will have to translate into legislation potentially leaving the fate of Trump's proposal in the hands of 11 House and Senate committees that oversee slices of the policies in play. The kickoff will include a Monday briefing with state and local officials. 
administration officials said to expect an extended sales pitch from Trump and his cabinet, who will be talking about infrastructure all across the nation. The woeful state of U.S. infrastructure is something Republicans and Democrats largely agree about, even if they don't agree on the solutions. The American Society of Civil Engineers has said the backlog comes to $4.59 trillion in needed investments by 2025. But already, some lawmakers are expressing deep concerns about the administration's plan to pay for the federal share of its proposal with budget cuts instead of proposing new revenue sources. Even some Republicans, notably House Transportation Chairman Bill Schuster of Pennsylvania, are pushing for a hike in the federal gasoline tax that pays for the ailing Highway Trust Fund. Democrats, meanwhile, are criticizing the White House's push to dramatically speed up the federal permitting process for infrastructure projects and warning that the Senate won't go along with any effort to impose arbitrary time limits on regulatory reviews. There's zero appetite for that, Senator Brian Schatz, D. Hawaii, told Politico last week. There may be a handful of Democrats that would support that but they'd also lose a couple of Republicans. The senior administration official said the White House has no intention of dismantling environmental protections but does want to shorten the process to two years, for example by letting one agency render the final yes or no verdict. The White House is preparing to achieve some of this streamlining through executive action, but it wasn't immediately clear what changes it may seek to make in existing laws that for example, allow the Environmental Protection Agency to veto permits issued by the Army Corps of Engineers. We're not saying you can have a bigger impact on endangered species, or the water can be dirtier or the air can be dirtier, or anything like that, the official said. Democratic lawmakers and liberal groups like the Center for American Progress have countered that agencies have yet to follow through on recent laws that would let them streamline permitting. Another source of controversy is the plan's heavy preference for doling out money to states and communities that are willing to put up the most cash on their own. Democrats say that would cause cities and states to hike taxes and fees on their residents, and would heavily disadvantage large projects such as the multi-billion dollar effort to rebuild rail infrastructure in and around New York City. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has warned that drivers could soon be paying Trump tolls because of the plan's incentives for communities to seek money from private investors. Hedge funds and wealthy investors will want projects that generate a profit by charging middle-class Americans hundreds of dollars a year in tolls, taxes and fees, Schumer wrote in an op-ed just before Trump's State of the Union address. Our nation's roads, bridges, and tunnels would become tools for wealthy investors to profit off the middle class rather than the job-creating public assets they ought to be. The White House says it would be up to local communities to decide how to raise money to pay for their projects, with sources that could include property taxes, sales taxes, or user fees. But the administration's making it clear that communities looking for help from Washington have to show they're prepared to pay for their own needs. A quarter, or $50 billion, would be reserved for projects in rural parts of the country. That money would go to states as block grants with relatively few strings. It would at least partially address concerns from lawmakers who say rural infrastructure projects may be relatively unappealing to private investors and seems tailor-made to attract support in the Senate. The White House official indicated that governors would make the call on how to divide the rural money. In contrast, some rural lawmakers have been pushing to steer a designated portion to broadband internet service. 5% of the federal dollars would be used to set up a capital financing fund. Some component of the plan will also center on workforce training, the official said. The administration will suggest broadening eligibility for Pell Grants, tweaking requirements for trade licensing and growing apprenticeships. Before his election, Trump swore to voters that a bill to generate $1 trillion in investment would materialize in his first 100 days as president. But the administration has delayed a plan again and again as it first crusade to repeal Obamacare and then to rework the tax code. The number has ballooned to $1.5 trillion because we've actually received a sort of more enthusiastic response than we anticipated from state and local governments, the White House official said.